Hey, 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 it's another Sunday night. Here we are, energy focus for the week. Come on in and join me. Terry Ann Hyman here, Natural Forces Studio, and the Empowered Spirit Circle on Facebook. Hey, Linnell, first one in. Come on in and join me tonight. We're going to be talking about the spirit world and the energy that lies ahead for us this week. Hey, Adrian, good to see you too. Come on in. Yes, the spirit world. That's exactly what we're going to be getting into tonight, communicating and receiving messages from spirit. What is it like for you this time of year? Are you one that really loves Halloween? Or is it one that brings up a lot of energy? Does it make you scared? Let me know what's going on. All right, I see a two for an A for the cards, I'm assuming. But what does this kind of year, this time of year, this Halloween energy do for you? Give me a little thumbs up. Let me know how you feel. Does it make you scary? Do you like the energy? Do you connect with the spirit world? Does that make you scared? Let me know. Hashtag spirit world if this is of interest to you. I know for me it's a very intense time of year. I shared a little bit about this on my blog coming out for tomorrow. Yeah, I did, about how the energy of this time right now really kind of opens me up to spirit world and the energy that affected me so many years ago, back in 1987. It really did. It really affected me. And I share that. I get a little vulnerable tomorrow's blog post. But the thing that I noticed about it is that it helped me to learn so much about it. We've got some hashtag spirit world. All right. Hashtag love Halloween. Love all this energy, especially a Dia de la Muteros. Yes, the Day of the Dead. Yes, me too. But I'll tell you, Linnell, I never really understood this energy until back into 1987. Yes, I always knew it was a magical time, but yeah, I lost a little baby. I did, and I didn't understand why. I was 20 weeks pregnant. But that energy stayed with me year after year. Every year about this time, it would come around. And that's the energy that led me to start understanding what is the spirit world about? Why do I feel this presence? What is this all about? And that's the energy we open up to right now. How about for you? Anybody you know have crossed over recently? Or how about for you and losing others, right? Where are you in that cycle? That's what this energy is all about, Halloween. Dying and living and living and dying, right? That's exactly what it's about. So yes, I took the opportunity to learn from that experience that I had and open up to the energy of the spirit world. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and just share this, see if I can find it. Go ahead and share it, get it out into the feed. If you do the same for me, that would be really great. Looking for it here. It always takes a moment to come up. Here we go. All right, so here we go. We're going to share this and get it out to everyone. And then we're going to really get into talking about the energy of the spirit this week, how we can connect with others, how can we connect with our guides, how we can connect with those that have crossed over. Very interesting time of year, right? And for many of us, we feel in that change of weather right now, right? So yeah, we're thinking fall, we're thinking holiday, we're thinking all that kind of energy. This definitely sets off of, of energy for us as we move into that holiday season. Sometimes it's a good thing and sometimes it's not. Give me one more second, I'm gonna share this. There we go, all right. Share it out as well. All right. Hey, Ines. Hey, Lori. How are you? So come on in. Let me know how you like this time of year. Do you like connecting with the spirit world? Does it scare you or does it empower you? I know it used to scare me. I know it's taken a while for me to feel empowered by this energy, but it has taken a while. So I allow it to, but now I can understand it so much better because of my experiences in life and because of asking for that connection. That's what's really important. Asking for the guidance, bringing it in and being in control. We're going to talk about those steps tonight when we talk about connecting into the spirit world. You know, I believe that when we come in, we all come in with our own vibration, right? We learn our lessons. We come in with the sole purpose, many times from something that we've learned from a previous life. And our soul is made up of all that light. I find it easier to look at and understand if we just realize everything's energy, right? We come in in a physical body, but once the physical body's gone, the spirit moves on, that soul moves on. And so we travel through energy, through time, through space. We can still connect to the energy 
of all things around. See, I believe, and maybe you tell me if you believe this too, and we come in, we kind of come in, we take a part of divine spirit with us as we incarnate. We bring in the Pallades, we bring in the star energy too, and we come in and we incarnate. And then we come in through the earth, right? Physical planes, we have the earth. And we have that ability to go within, and that's where we connect. That's where we connect with divine guidance, inner light, all the things around us. So yes, it is possible to connect with the spirit world. It is possible to stay in touch with that energy that is all around. How is that for you? Is this something that you understand? Is this something that you like to connect with this time of year? Give me a little bit of a yes, thumbs up, hashtag connect, hashtag scared if it really kind of scares you and turns you away. I know I've been in both places, but I will say the more I embrace this energy, the more I really dig deep within my soul, the more it opens up. And the more I do get that guidance, just as I was talking about that little baby that I lost so early on stays with me. I ask for its guidance and it appears and it comes. And every time this time of year, it's like she grows up too. And I feel her. I feel her right here above me coming in and knowing that all is in perfection. All is exactly as I need it to be. And I ask for guidance and I ask for messages. Definitely connect but unsure all right sean that's just takes practice you just keep doing it keep bringing in the messages that's all you have to do that is actually what builds the confidence right everything is energy everything is energy right so we have a lot of different vibrations out there all right i was listening to um sally quinn's book finding magic she's a really good book and she talks about this laura you'd like this she talks about astrology a lot and she talks about all the planets and all the bodies they have their vibrations and that vibration emanates out and we can connect with that vibration as well and then we can connect with so many different levels of vibration and energy so the spirit world is just one of them all right, many of you study Reiki, all right, so we know Reiki, we channel from the universe. Some of you have learned angel energy, that's another vibration we bring in too. The spirit world is the same thing. It's just asking and really being open to receiving what those vibrations are about. And there's ways that you can help it along, ways that you can help connect to it, calling it in, right? We start with the meditation, we start with that invocation, we ask. Ask for that message. And we know that we're in charge. We're the boss. We don't let the spirits take over. Because you can. You can get caught into some of that dark energy if you're not really strong in your own energy. And that's where people get afraid. Does that happen to you? Do you lose a little bit of that control and you get all afraid that things are going to happen? You just have to shine your light stronger. That's all. You be the boss of that. Always you can stop. Always you can ask for it to go away. Ground your energy and come back. That's one of the keys I know. Sean, maybe that can help you as well. So this time of year, as we go through this energy, we notice the light is shifting, right? The afternoon light's intense. The light is thin, right? We talk about the veils thinning this time of year. We're right in between, right? We're in Halloween. We've got All Saints Day. We're also in Scorpio energy. Scorpio takes us into that deeper part of who we are. It takes us into that spiritual energy. That is where we start out. Now, this also leads right into the other holidays as well and all that energy that happens between now and the winter until the light starts to return, right? That's exactly why we call it the veils are thinning. That portal of energy is opening up. Yes. So as you go through the work week, start out this week tomorrow. All right. It's going to get a little crazy, but tomorrow be productive. You still can get some work done. Tuesday, we're going to start to see that things get a little bit strange. Our dreams can get a little bit strange. Yes, Sean Scorpio here. That's why you're as intuitive as you are. That's why you're as deep as you are. And as you too. All right. There we go. Me too. Scorpio rising. So start out your work week being strong, being focused, all right? Get stuff done tomorrow. Tuesday, you're not going to want to, right? All that Halloween energy, all that spirit energy flying around. Stay grounded, stay centered, and you can really get some messages through your dreams and your meditation as well. All right, now Wednesday is going to kind of be kind of that leftover day, hungover from the sugar blues, right? So yeah, Wednesday, you're going to have to eat well, drink lots of water, right? And then you're going to start to notice the energy shifts even more because we move into a full moon. Full moon on Saturday, I believe. So we start to get all that energy building, all right? So in terms of work, be productive on Monday. Tuesday's pretty good, then everybody's going to want to party and play, right? We're going to really want to cross over in between both of the worlds. So allow yourself the time to do that. But keep your energy strong, all right? Sometimes during this time, 
If your energy is not strong, if you're weak, depressed, if you're doing a little partying, know that spirit energy can come in, that entity energy. That's why we have to be strong. Don't let it in. All right. It feels strange. Honor those strange feelings and really breathe. Shine some light. Get you some selenite. All right. Here's my crystal ball. Selenite keeps the energy light. Keeps the spirits out of there. I also bring out my skulls this time of year. You guys work with skulls? Get some of these. This is like, they're like top of the kingdom, right? When we talk about the elemental kingdom, they're like man. So they give us lots of energy. So yes, these are great to have around right now for lots of protection on the earthly plane. Very important. Definitely. So get some crystals around you. That way it can hold that vibration for you because we don't want those entities coming in. They're just forms, right? So when your energy is tight, when you don't have those little holes in the aura, you can be strong, but they can come in. So be careful, especially if you're traveling around to some of the, like the haunted houses or the graveyards or wherever people go on Halloween, right? Be careful. Keep your energy strong. Keep the breath up. Make sure you get a good meditation in for the day. All right, so that's what the focus is on the week. Now, we're going to do a meditation to prepare to bring in this energy. So when you work with the spirit world, one of the things that we want to really do is we really want to set out that meditation. Call in, ask for protection. Also, what you want to know, too, is who are you calling in? Are you calling in that those that have crossed over? Are you calling in your spirit guides? Are you calling in guardian angels at this time? Be really specific. That way you don't just call them all in and then you're surrounded by all this energy that you don't know. So very important that you know that. All right, then you also want to be open to the messages. You want to be able to receive. So hear, see, feel, know, look, use your clairs. You guys know what I'm talking about. And bring those messages in. Trust. Trust what you get in the beginning. Don't say, nah, something else. No, trust and go deeper with that message. And then use that energy for your guidance, all right? And then the other thing is to always be in control. Offer gratitude, be in control. If the energy starts to get a little strange, close it down. Close it down. That's all. You be the boss of that, that energy that you're bringing in. But it really helps when you know who you're calling in. It really does. Don't call everybody in, right? There are a lot of souls out there, my friends. A lot of souls. So be really specific. All right? So let's just take a moment and do a meditation. Following these guidelines as we call in. Take a nice deep inhale. And exhale out. Calling in. Inhaling. And exhaling, closing the eyes if you can. Just feel your feet flat on the floor. And begin to lift the breath up the body. And exhale, send it all the way back down. And again, inhale, bring the breath all the way up. And exhale, breathe it all the way down. Feel that connection with the earth. And as we open up, call in whoever it is for you right now, calling in. And ask to be protected, to be surrounded, and to be guided through this meditation as you open up to receive the message that has come forward for you. Ask a question right now. Pose that question for you. Inhale and exhale. And just send it out into the universe. Take a nice deep inhale. Bring in the divine light. Feel the energy around you. Open up to the guidance above the crown chakra and bring all that energy in. Continue the breath up and down. Now the cards I'm using today, these postcards from Spirit, they're really beautiful and we're going to intuitively look at them. Colette Baron reads collection. So if you chose the first card, all right, this card is really beautiful. I'm going to read it to you, and then we're going to talk about it. It says, Dearest, wonderful you, to help you manifest a life for the highest good, we invite you to examine your deepest desires. Imagine all your desires, no matter what kind, like magic sea pods in a basket, glowing with infinite potential. Infinite potential. Look closely at each one. Are you afraid that some may bring you too much attention and invite negative reactions from others? Is change too daunting? Are you afraid to stretch and grow? Let yourself be led forward and let the seeds of positive intention take to the wind. Your desires count and you are worthy of them. They are essential for co-creating your world. 
Did you ever consider that when a desire comes from deep within you, it might be spirit moving you to create something beautiful to share with others? Some desires are infused with miraculous powers to move the heart and influence the world in ways you can't possibly know. We know you and love you so deeply and are so happy to support you. So if you chose this card, yes, there are lots of seeds that you are ready to plant, to open up. Look closely at them. Let yourself open. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid at all. You've got this guidance coming in. Spirit World wants you to know it's time to plant those seeds. All right, it's time to do it. Open up to it. Let yourself move forward. Infinite potential. They're guiding you to tell you that. Infinite potential. Take a deep inhale. New energy coming out there. Plant it, plant it, plant it. Harvest your work and turn around and put it back out there. So if you drew card two, if you asked for card two, here's the message from card two. Dearest you, since you're on earth, you understand how buildings are built, yes? A good, solid foundation and yet flexibility too in case of earthquakes. Truth be told, you can't offer something sustainable unless it is built from a solid base. Whether it's an idea that takes from one step at a time or an actual house that needs a sturdy foundation dug, poured, and built. We want to remind you of this because you might need a little encouragement to see this is true in your life at this time. Beautiful foundation, build it up, right? Celebrate the fact that right now you can repair the cracks in the foundation of your life effortlessly, as well as do a general site check to ensure your hard work is being well supported. Do this and know you are building your life on a perfect and sound foundation that will allow you to welcome the many miracles waiting to come to visit. We're so happy for you and so intrigued that you're building. All right, this is a beautiful card, right? If you're building something, know you have to take step by step by step. Know it's the foundation that we have to build. How many times do we try to get the end before we don't get the foundation? Hello, I know that one. I try to get there before I build the steps. So this is actually very good for coming right after that first card, right? Put your ideas out there and know you have to build those steps. Trust it. Check it out. Go back. Don't try to get way there too fast, all right? That's what that card is about. Take a deep inhale. Ah, and just exhale out. Beautiful messages. So the third one, if you chose card three, it says, Dearest you, we know everything in the universe is perfect, even in its flaws. I love this. And we view the creations of spirit in total awe. All is unique, yet part of a unity of existence. But the human experience is a little different from ours. You tend to have a specific standard from what you consider ideal, and this isn't serving you right now. Forget perfect. So forget your idea of perfection and see through our eyes, allowing things to be as they are without judgment. Don't wait until a perfect moment. Don't wait to get those seeds out there. Don't wait to build your foundation, right? No, don't wait. Instead, enter life with all its flossomeness. You're exactly where you're supposed to be. Let others be who they are too. Imperfect and human, that's what we are. Complex or simple, it doesn't matter for there is always something to discover, experience and love. When you drop the need for an ideal, you uncover the real treasure, which will be far more interesting and valuable. Loving you like crazy. All right, so if three was the one you chose, know that you don't have to be perfect. Don't let perfection wait, all right? Don't let it wait. Yay, Linnell, all of your energy, your Virgo need energy. Yes, I can understand that, all those details. Don't wait. Don't judge, all right? If we wait forever, if we wait till it's ideal and perfect, we won't do it. So these cards are beautiful all into their own and even as a story, right? Even as a story, we start with that idea, right? Harvesting right now. We're in the fall. We generally plant our seeds in the, in the spring, but in the fall, we can reharvest, right? We can pull it in and set it back out there. And that's what this energy is about. Put those seeds out there for you. All right. Put them out there. Check them out. Don't let fear get the best of you. Infinite potential. All right. Then build your foundation. Perfect flow. Build your foundation one step at a time. Don't try to get there too fast. Be in that infinite possibility. Know that it will grow and it will build. I can vouch for that one. All too often I try to get to that vision. I can vision. I can see way out there and I always just want to get there. No, we have to build a step. So I've learned that one the hard way. Some of us do, but at least we keep learning, right? Of course, correct. I learned it in that 
way. And then the last one is don't wait for it to be perfect. Not at all. You do not have to wait for it to be perfect. Start, learn, again, course correct. That's how we move forward. Beautiful messages from spirit coming through. So whoever is out there overlooking, I feel these messages are really timely for all of us, for each and all of us right now. We're in a big transit with all of that big Saturn and Sun and Jupiter, I think. Laurie, correct me if I'm wrong, but all of that big planets coming into alignment, that Scorpio energy pushing us out there to live our purpose, to stand on top of the edge, to stand out there and do our work. How is it for you? How did that feel? What I have the comments. Anybody feel that? Woo, needed number three, chose three. All right. Virgo needed to hear that. Welcome, everybody. Hey, Vicky, I left you a message. Last day of Libra here, but I feel that Scorpio rising, right? Yes, you're on that edge, so you probably do. And right now, right now is exactly the energy coming through for that. Definitely. All right. So I don't know. I can't quite tell. I did something here with a little screen. I can't quite see if anybody would like to. Oh, look, I could invite you on. Anybody would like a card if you missed the reading before? Let me know. I'm actually going to be doing readings tomorrow on Blog Talk Radio. It's probably going to be one of my last live shows. I'm changing around my podcast, but I am on the air tomorrow. If you want to talk about it and do a reading, I'll be using these cards continuing right along. 12 Central Time. You can call in 347-996-5387. And we're going to be talking about this tomorrow more and offering readings as well. That's definitely what's happening. All right. So I don't see any comments here. Other anybody else want a card? I had a car accident day and it feels like things are kind of crazy. Oh, Alicia, I'm so sorry to hear that. Yes, the energy is crazy. It definitely is. That's why we need to ground. That spirit energy is out there. And you know what? A lot of people do lots of partying this time of year, right? And all that partying energy makes for little breaks in our energy system. So craziness is out there, right? So we have to be really much more guarded ourselves. Bring in that spirit energy. Really bring it in to, to really pull it around you so you stay protected. All right, I see a couple of people asking for cards, Lisa and then Thelma. Welcome, Lisa and Thelma. I don't know if I know you guys. I recognize your names, but welcome to this. Welcome to the group. Yes, definitely. All right, so Lisa, I need you to just kind of in your own head, think about who you're asking for a message for. Spirit guide, someone that's crossed over, someone that you've lost and loved. Then put that question in your mind. I'm going to draw a card for you here. These are beautiful. These are Colette Baron Reed's cards. Tiny writing, though. I have to use my glasses. All right, this one is for you, Lisa. Dear you, there is always more than one side to an argument. Two sides, if not more, to every story and hundreds of ways to be right, be different, be at odds, and so on. Today, we suggest that instead of looking for differences, you find a meeting place of agreement and approach this experience with understanding and compassion. Seek common ground to understand how another person thinks and how an alternate plan might be laid. Stay out of judgment, too. Very important. Observe, discern, but accept that others have different stories, experiences, and journeys. And some people might refuse to remain open to other people's point of view. No matter what you've been presented with a great opportunity to explore a new way of doing things, once common ground is reached, you're attracting people in situations that enrich your life and bring wonderful things to learn. We love you so much. All right, Lisa, so I hope that's helpful. Maybe you're in an argument. I don't know. Give me a thumbs up if you are. But look at all sides and remove that judgment. All right, so if any of you are listening and maybe you are also in some kind of argument, take a moment. This is afterthought. Take a moment and make sure that you understand there are always many ways to look at things and see if you can open up to that understanding. All right, so Thelma, this card is for you. All right. Perfect, Lisa says. Good. All right, so this is Unlock Your Magic. So this is a message from Thel Thelma. I hope you thought of who you want to ask this message to. Dearest you, going the extra mile to achieve your dreams and putting in some overtime will reap big rewards. Now is the time for you to act to stir up more energy and put those plans into action. There are many windows of opportunity that open but close quickly when you don't take the risk and go for it. All right, that was kind of big, right? Today, we, we, today, be confident that your hard work will pay off and you'll feel that satisfaction and fulfillment of reaching your desired outcome. It might turn out even better than you expected. Isn't that amazing? Remember, however, much work you're willing to put in 
we will match it uh, uh, tenfold. All right, so remember, however much you're willing to put in, your guides up there and your whoever's crossed over, whoever's looking out after you, Thelma, is will match it tenfold. Everyone here is rooting for you to win the game of life. So just do it. Just do it. All right, I hope that resonates with you very much. Yes. Ina, sorry to hear you're very emotional. Who would you like? Think of who you want to ask that message from. What is the message you're asking? What is the question you're asking? I mean, formulate that. And Laurie, you'll be next. All right, Ines, this is for you. Ground your energy. It says, celebrate life. Another celebrate life. All right, dearest you, you need to know that you can change things miraculously. All right? You can let go of that. You need to know that you can change things miraculously for you and everyone and make things right. It's never too late. Forgiveness is about releasing yourself from the burden of an old story, one in which you're a victim of someone else's actions or your own. You don't need to carry this around. You can set yourself free. All right, Ines, I hope that helps for you. Know that you can change. Forgiving is really important. Even advocating for good because of this experience requires your forgiveness to be effective. Forgiveness is never about condoning things that were done. Never, ever, ever. It's about letting yourself off the hook from carrying the burden. Resentment and hurt are like viruses that spread to others, and that is the opposite of what you really desire, right? No, let it go. Forgive it. Let it go. Open that energy. Imagine what your life would be like without the burdens that you carry when you do not forgive. All right, that's a really beautiful way to come in about that. You can do it, Ines. You can. Everyone over here believes in you and adores you. Beautiful message. All right, I hope that was helpful. All right, Lori, bring a question to mind. Who are you calling in? Spirit world, someone that's passed, your guides. Know that in your head and then ask that question to yourself. And I'm going to draw a card for you. Another beautiful card here with love. Dearest Lori, we bet you must be so exhausted some days, giving as much as you do. Sharing your energy so beautifully in service to the highest good can leave you feeling depleted, like an empty well. If it feels as if there's no more water for you, the good news is we have a plan. Today, go take a relaxing bath. Yes, book a massage, read a novel, buy yourself flowers or plant some in your garden. Make time for self-care, not more work on yourself. Self-care. By tending to yourself now, you're reminded to do so more often. All right, Laurie, we know that. You've been busy. You've been traveling. You're back. Make sure you take some time for you. And be sure to use a word that might have caused you some anxiety in the past but is essential for your well-being. Say no. How many of us know that? Sometimes we have to say no. Say it with us. No, thank you. No, I can't. Thank you, but no. I like that one. Thank you, but no. You, you do not have to explain. Just say gently but firmly. Then go for a soak. Life will wait for you to bring yourself back to center, replenished and ready for more adventures. We love you so much. All right, Lori, that was a beautiful one for you, right? I just took a salt bath, too. I just finally got my salts. Yes, we have to do that sometimes. All right. Hey, friends, how are you? All right. Yes. Lisa says, perfect too. All right, very good. Hey, Syl, Syl, you drew three. You can go back in the beginning and look at that, but that was about perfection. Don't need to hold on to that perfection. Just do it. All right, so as you go through the week, yes, Laurie says, as you go through the week, these are beautiful cards. These really are beautiful cards. Colette Baron reads. They're new. I love the messages. They give us lots to talk about. So if you'd like a more in-depth reading tomorrow, join me on the Empowered Spirit Show. I'll be taking live calls. You don't have to say your name. You can keep it private. So let's just recap here. As you go through the week, all right, open up to getting busy, getting done Monday. Tuesday, know that half the day is going to just kind of be lost. Stay strong in your energy. Don't bring those entities in. Make really sure that you're strong in your energy. Meditate. Get some selenite, wear some grounding stones throughout the day. Even if you're dressing up, all right, just keep it strong with the energy world. Know you can connect at any time. Then as we move out towards the end of the week, we're going to get that full moon energy coming forward. Beautiful full moon energy. I think I heard it's a super moon. I don't know, Laura, you can comment on that. But yes, we have all that energy building again. Go back to the new intentions you set for the new moon. See what's coming forward for you and just kind of reinforce that energy. All right. 
I will be offering a Zoom call Thursday night. It's more of a private call. Many of you have heard me talk about my spiritual development mastery training. So if you're interested in that, make a comment below or look for the emails. Going to really get into detail about that. It is time to become spiritual leaders. It's time to stand up and bring this practice out even greater. Yes, Laurie says it is a super moon. So let me know if you want interesting in that. And also because of this time of year, and I know for me how hard it is, I am actually asking... I'm offering uh, spirit assessments. You can go to my website, terryannhyman.com, and sign up for a spirit assessment. Don't do this alone. Come in and get some help, all right? I know what it is for me at this time of year, and I know by reaching out and opening up, it helps me as well. So I want to help you too. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for joining. Listen to the messages if you missed them. They're beautiful. They're all about putting our work out there. They're all about knowing we are always protected, all right? The guides are looking out for us. Just trust. Look up at the stars, look up at the moon, use the energy of the cosmos to empower your spirit. Thanks so much for joining me. Let's just take a nice little sound bite here. Bring it in, open it up. Stay strong in the spirit world, connect to each and every one. Have a great week to your spirit. Namaste. Thanks for joining me.